Naked is the Best Disguise is the title of the show. And uh, it, I was throwing it out there because there's a book by a guy named uh, Rosenblum that's about how Arthur Conan Doyle hated Nietzsche. And I, so I threw it out and the curator thought it was fantastic. And it's basically about how you can't, you're always revealing who you are and what you are. And, and, uh, and of course, the more you do reveal, the more people don't see. So when I threw it out there, Anna Katz loved it. And I don't know what it means to her. I think she has a whole uh, curatorial thesis and that goes along with it. Teapots. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Of course, the, the basic story is when I started in my studio, many of the guys and gals were making tea cups. Cups were a thing in uh, the uh, 70s, late 70s, LA, 80s. And uh, as I reckon, cups were kind of taken, and I wanted to do something. And the teapot has more parts. And also, there's a whole thing about hanging sculptural imagery and ideas on a for functional form that we really know what it is and have very distinct preconceived ideas. shelf in the first room is uh, basically a recreation of my first studio, a section of my first studio in 1975. And we did two of them. One of them was the colors of the shelf and then we did another one and so that was, I did that natural to be like a reflection of the first one. obelisk with all the little balls, the multi-centipede kind of foot thing. Yeah, they, you know, they, these things are all studies in the excess and absurdity. I'm a baby boomer. It functions with drawers. The drawers pull out, they can hold things, but they're such an oddball size, you don't know what the devil they can hold. So it, it's always a twist, right? And, and so, I, you know, I'd have to suggest things like ties or snakes or belts. I guess if CDs had existed, I would have made them a little wider. The pieces in the lower area, the ceramics, you know, in a more intimate area for intimate objects, cover a, a range from about 1975 up till last year. And so there's a, a pretty curatorial, what would you say, litany or progression, some with some uh, 
you know, pieces that are very important to my development. A friend of mine had come in and he had worked for uh, a, a couple of guys that had done a sculpture for Coachella. And he thought that we could, he had met the art director and so forth, and he really wanted to, to be the project manager if we could get a job doing a sculpture. So I developed this whole group of pieces to uh, present to them. And uh, unfortunately, that didn't play out as my getting a commission, but it did give rise to a whole group of sculptures and images that I really liked, and, and uh, I've been working with them. So that, that was the origin of this. Check it out. I wanted to do a... Um, a piece that had a clock that's wind driven so that the clock, you know, if the wind's blowing fast, the clock's spinning around, but it's like Las Vegas, there's no time. It's just in the wind. And then, you know, it has to be built on sand. And then I wanted to do a hamburger stand, and a friend of mine is involved in this really weird uh, deal where about being a, 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 a citizen of the universe kind of business. And of course it means that he feels he shouldn't pay taxes, but the other part of it is that their, their flag, they decided that the American flag should have uh, vertical stripes, not horizontal, because the uh, horizontal stripes are the, are the war flag, the flag we always take into war, the man of war. And so I did this and then I put a peace sign because I thought that would, you know, that'd be what's happening. First thing you see when you turn the corner are the group of uh, Torchier lamps. And those are replicas of pieces I did for the 84 Olympic athletes villages at USC and UCLA. And so they, they're smaller versions that I did for all the people that participated as a, uh, a special thing. We did about 70 of them. The big three chairs in the middle. The Bel Air chair is 1981, done in Italy from Memphis, uh, Milano, and it uh, is still in production. You can buy one today. The uh, second one, which is my production, is a study of the parts that compose the Bel Air chair, and with a lot of the uh, aspects revealed or extended. And so the third one, which I did for this show, is even more protracted and is really the elliptical back is really lifting off that semicircular back and is way up in the air. And the red part's only defined by the piping, the little line. The ball, which is always protruding into the, the seat, is really exaggerated so you know you're, you virtually can't sit down on it without sitting on the ball.
folding table, the four tabletops. It also was done for this show, and it's a protraction of what I did for the first uh, piece I did for Memphis, which was called the Brazil Table. And so it's kind of a cross between an ironing board and a surfboard. But this one added a whole different group of shapes and folds out. Everything starts with a drawing, you know, it has to because I have a terrible memory. <laughs> the crazy part is when you do these drawings, you know, and then you go, I have the colors all worked out and the way it's going to go, and you go, you can't find it. Well, oh, God, I don't know. I've got to get it done. And so I just redo the colors, and usually they're pretty much the same. Again, a thing where we were really experimenting with the whole idea of not making one leg the same, everything different, and it was really a, a, a study in excess. I love it. <laughs> 